afternoon and good evening to fine friends and family joining us from around the world. My name is Emily Takudis, and I'm Executive Commissioning Editor of Food Books at Fiden and based in New York. I am so delighted to welcome you to this unique celebration of our newest Spring 2021 Culinary Title Monk, Light and Shadow on the Philosopher's Path. This book is an evocative and personal chef monograph and an ode to wood-fired cooking from Japan's exciting emerging chef. I am joined by our esteemed author, Chef Yoshihiro Imai in Kyoto. His culinary practice, philosophy, and atmospheric restaurant are true treasures. He is deeply inspired by Japanese culture and food traditions, as well as his time spent at restaurants around the world. All of this informs his celebrated, exquisite, and highly seasonal contemporary cooking at Monk, which opened in 2015. We are so excited to have partnered with some of our favorite independent bookstores and brands from all corners of the world to share this book with you in a conversation and with some images from the book's pages. We hope you enjoy. Now let's dive in. So to continue, your book is centered in your personal and culinary philosophies. And this really is the thread throughout the book. The pages include so much more than recipes and photos. Can you share a bit about these philosophies and how they inspire what you do, but especially in the kitchen? Uh, okay, for me, um, for me, cooking is not about showing off my like, technique or creativity or you know, cooking for me is just a medium a reflection into nature and human being. This is what I wanted to express through this book, and that's the idea reflects in the imaginary and design of the book. Actually, this is something that is quite difficult to communicate through a restaurant everyday service. I want to convey what is difficult to express through daily business of serving food, but in book form, you know, we can share all kinds of things like images of where the ingredients come from, what I'm seeing and feeling in the morning at the farm. And I can also talk more deeply about the background stories of producers and myself, well, and share my philosophy about cooking and life as well. This is how I wanted to approach making a book. And I have the idea that the whole book should be contrast of light and shadow, which is the main theme. And I want the experience of reading the book to be like watching a film, which is also the way it is standing at the monk. So your sense of place in Kyoto is really essential to everything that you do. And it, it really comes across in the book. I would love to hear more specifically about what Kyoto the city, the philosopher's path, the environment, what, what it means to you? Oh, yes. Um, Kyoto is a very special place. Uh, it was cultural, it was capital of Japan for thousand years until 1871. And it is still the center of Japanese culture in many ways. And so one great thing is even though it is such a cultural city, with so much inspiration and so many things to run. It is also a very compact city, so that is very close to nature. That's why I can go to the farms and farmers market every day and come back to the kitchen for dinner service. The farms up north are the source of my cooking and I create the menu depending on what I get in the morning. It's very flexible. Um, based on the ingredients or weather or what I follow in nature. So sense of place is directly reflecting the dishes and service at the monk. And as I say, uh, my restaurant is on the eastern edge of the city, on a small path called Fiosfa's Path. The name of Fiosfa's Path comes from the famous then philosopher Kitaro Nishida, who lived around here and you know, walked on the path every day, thinking and meditating. So it is beside a small, beautiful canal lined with cherries and maple trees. 
So we can enjoy cherry blossom in the spring and then fireflies in the early summer, and beautiful autumn leaves in the autumn. We can feel the changing seasons very directly. There is uh, no restaurant around here. It is just a residential area. So for the guests, visiting Monk is kind of a special experience. They will find my restaurant after a nice walk of nature and find a light and sign on the dark path. There is a certain magic to this location. And after dining at Monk, when they open the door to go home, there is a fresh air from nature and dark and quiet path. I think it gives their guests a special feeling. So there's a very special cast of characters who supply you with specialty ingredients and produce, the families of growers at the farmer's market, Mr. Yoshida and his cheese, Mr. Yoshikawa, the fish supplier, the man who gives you mushrooms and so many more. It would be interesting to hear a bit more about some of them, or perhaps you have a story about one of these people in particular. Oh yes, I wrote a lot of essays about the farmers, the man who provides the fire and the other distributors. Everyone has a unique background and I can say um, that I am really thankful for them and love them. Definitely, I cannot run a restaurant without them. Monk exists because of their corrective dedication. I cannot make something without them. So each of these people have an interesting story and a deep philosophy. For example, Mr. Fluhara, who provides the fire, is planting trees now to build, rebuild the Kiyomis temple 400 years into the future. No. And then the selfish who distributes fish to monk goes to the fish market at the Tsuga two hours away from the city and sends a list of the day fish his chef's clients at nine o'clock and deliver them to the restaurant around noon. This means I can get a super fresh fish. During mushroom season, I got my wild mushroom from Sasaki-san, a uh, forager in Iwate. He is one of my best friends and he, was, he has a very unique uh, sharp and sensitivity for nature. I know that music also has a very special role in your practice and your cooking. Can you talk to us about this? Oh, yes, um, this is quite an interesting question to think about. Um, I have loved music since my childhood, both listening and playing. I became interested in food at about uh, 20 years old, so food came into my life much later. So I think in my brain, some part of my system of thinking is very musical. In the essays, I used a lot of musical metaphors and describes the dishes in the restaurant. First, um, my restaurant monk is uh, like a live session of jazz. I cook right in front of the guests. It is very close and the counter is flat. You know, jazz has a um, basic melody and a chord progression. But beyond that, each instrumental begins its own improvisation. And what happened that night in the restaurant is one off. That can be repeated, sharing heat or like uh, loose or bitter like emotions, and creating the reasons. Um, our omakase course is like a cold progression, I think. And the ingredients of the day are like uh, instruments. And even the guests are part of session to make one night special. And then the energy from the guests and from us fills the room to create like a certain atmosphere. Like a live session, this happens only once and it will disappear. And then let me for more analogy about music. It's a publishing with Python, you know, it was, uh, of course, dream of mine for a long time, and I am so lucky and appreciate 
that quite don't found us being small restaurant that is not too famous I feel almost like a you know musician food praise at the small jazz club or even like on the street that suddenly like a released an album from the Blue Note recording. So I think it's something like that. So thank you so much, I want to say. Well, thank you. We are yeah. so honored to be publishing you, really. And you're listening to you talk about music was so eloquent. Wow. Um, I'd like to move now from one art form to another, the photography. So the yes. photography in this book, Monk, is so stunning. And the photographer is actually someone you've known since childhood. So I would love to hear more about the process of taking the photographs for the book. And in particular, the very last photo in the book is of a beautiful turn up. And it accompanies an essay about walking into the future, which you wrote later in, in the bookmaking process. Will you tell us about this image and why you decided to end the book with this particular spread? Yes, okay. Um, the first, the photographer, Yuka, is actually my high school classmate. And she became a photographer and I became a chef. And we reunited about uh, eight years ago and we made, a, we made and self-published a book called Sako. I'm happy to work with her again and this amazing project with Biden. And the last photo of the book, this turnip is beautiful, right? Um, I found this turnip at the edge of the farm. It was uh, left behind after the harvest and had been thrown aside after the harvest a couple months before. But uh, it had only like, a life force and then it started to grow without soil and grew beautiful flowers. I remember it was the uh, early spring of 2020 and it was the last photo shoot for this book. At the time, my heart was hurting because of the sad news about the coronavirus spreading through Europe. Everyone was worried about that, you know, like what was happening in the world. You know. I wanted to put out a strong message about like hope or being loved or sharing light into the future at the end of the book. I wrote an essay called Walking into a Different Future and the image of the tunic is on the spread. Even now, the world is still like overcast by chaos and fear. So I think the meaningful to put this message at the end of the book to send a strong message to the world. So Yoshihiro, on page 49, there's another essay and it's called The Circle, The Sticker, and The Professor. It's a truly remarkable tale. I would love for you to read it for us. Yes, yeah, sure. So, let's get um, there, Sako, the sticker, and the professor. There is a funny story about the monk building. One day, out of the blue, I received an email from an Israeli chef who was interested in working at Monk. The chef's name was Yohai. He was traveling in Japan and walking down the Josephus Pass when he saw the fire of the monk oven and the had feeling that he was home. He worked at a restaurant back in Israel that had a wood fire oven and was drawn by it. He was uh, hoping to stay for a while in Japan so he could work and gain new experience. So he uh, reached out. I wasn't able to hire him for very long for visa reasons. But he interned for a few weeks and stayed in a small room in the back of the restaurant. Yohai was a skill chef with a wonderful personality. I learned many things from him. 
My wife and I fell in love with the Israeli dishes he made with spices and chickpeas for our staff meal. Discovering the dietary food flavors of the genre of the food I've never experienced is one of my greatest joys. We had a pop-up brunch service featuring Yohai as a guest chef, and it was a big hit. Yohai became a great friend. When living in his hometown, Tel Aviv, Yohai had heard many stories about Kyoto from professor who studied Japanese literature. While doing research at Kyoto University a long time ago, the professor had lived in Kyoto for a few years with his family. During the few weeks that Yohai was in Kyoto, he got in touch with the professor. He shared a story about a monk explaining where it was and how it looked. When suddenly they realized that the building, the house monk is the very same building the professor had lived in so many years ago. This is where he had his first child. So it's a place that holds many special memories for him. Somehow, Yohai had found his way to the very place, the very same room, where the professor who had filled in imagination with story of Kyoto one's life. Asako connects the monk building to the faraway city of Tel Aviv. At the back of entrance of monk, there is a vintage fire extinguisher that has been sitting around for God knows how long. On this fire extinguisher is an old sticker with the mysterious letters that are not from the alphabet, which of course I cannot read it. I had assumed some hippies had left it three years ago, but it turns out the sticker was left by the professors. Yohai translated what the letter says in Hebrew. Only that brings love. Today, this sticker and those words have come to represent the wonder of getting to work in this restaurant. And my immense gratitude for the opportunity to do so. Like a blessing of the sticker, connecting people across oceans. My wish is that the love we flow into this place and the love brought in my, by the many people who gather here, I will be brought back and share with the many homes and lives of the guests in a great circle. Thank you. Wow, so I <laughs> have read this essay so many times when you first delivered it. I was blown away through the editing process. And then when we laid out the whole book into the design, I read it again, moved every time, but to hear you hear the words come out of your mouth, it remains so incredibly moving. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. There are three recipes in particular that I would love for you to talk about. How the dishes came to be, the ingredients, how you experiment with techniques, um, and your inspiration. So these are the three recipes. Uh, the suyaki pizza crust, the Fukinoto yes. vegetable pizza, and your very special persimmon dessert. The Suyaki one is a kind of like a simplest, simple on a key of the course menu here in Mang. Um, it is just like olive oil and Parmesan cheese, and, but uh, it's kind of showcase of a restaurant. And I served every day the like, car up, so guests can taste, you know, um, our pizza crust itself. And then, actually, I got the idea about that from uh, 
tea ceremony, kaiseki style Japanese cuisine. And then another one, uh, Fukimoto pizza. Uh, Fukimoto is a wild mountain vegetable in Japan. And then it has a quite bitter taste. But uh, this bitterness is, for me, it's like a directly connected to the memories or emotion. Sauce is using a uh, heshiko sauce, which is a uh, fermented mackerel. And it tastes a little bit like an uh, anchovy sauce. So ingredients is perfectly Japanese. I think this is very uh, special pizza recipe for mom. And then very last one is parsimon desert. Um, parsimon desert is a, just on the uh, raw set and caramelized parsimon in the oven with the wasanbon ice cream. Wasanbon is a special Japanese sugar here. Very, very simple dish. But uh, on top, I put the parsimon leaf. That parsimon leaf has a small hole with a bite by an insect. I think the, like the Japanese feel sense of beauty from this because this shows kind of like a loneliness. So even just put the one leaf on the very simple dish, like a dish gonna be more like poetic. So I really love that dish. And then the thread of the book, um, Yuya put the other like a photo of beautiful light and shadow. So that's really my like a most favorite one. The dish photo and then the scenery photo is very, very connected. And it's, I think that's a highlight of all the you know, highlight of this. Well, thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure and you have touched all of us who have been working with you over these last two years making the book from editorial to design to production. It's been a very moving experience. We've all gained such a deep appreciation for your love and passion of what you do. And we're so excited now to be able to share your book with readers all over the world. So thank you so much for this very illuminating and insightful conversation and enjoy knowing that the book will be everywhere in so many hands. Thank you so much for this conversation. Thanks so much, Emily. Very nice to talk with you. Thank you.